Hello and welcome to this video on using the colour swapper shader and some extra effects on existing meshes. Now when you get the colour swap shader you'll see uh, I've used this shader on my ogre character but I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking how am I going to use this with my own characters for example like Sinti's characters which are re really popular so I've went ahead and bought uh, one of the character packs purely for this demo um, just to show you how these could be applied. Now when you open their pack you can see they've got uh, a few variations of textures that you can apply to their characters. So if I choose this one and choose the material I can then change this up by going through each of these uh, each of these textures right to get some fixed variations on uh, the characters. Now you could very well go into Photoshop and change these palettes up but it's hard to know what colours correspond with what. So if you use my colour swap shader then you can change these up quite easily. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to this character here and instantly it's taking the colours from here uh, detecting them through the first colour slot of each colour here and then changing them to something new Right, so you can really change things up even more. You can change the range uh, that it detects things. I'm just going to pull this to the left so that you see the slider. Okay, uh, so if it's detecting a colour and changing it to green, you can go ahead and change that one. <clears throat> we can move the colour around to see what changes. You know, the detect colour can be moved to see what changes. The range can be moved and eventually you know everything can be sort of fine-tuned until you get something that you want but the main thing I want to show you in this video is the updates I've made to this is that you can add like outline um, you can see it only very subtly here maybe I need to increase the width uh, and you can change the color of that so let me just change the width ability of this for now this is the graph um, this is the max width, so I'm just going to put that up to 10. Right, and now, <clears throat> now we can get more width out of that. Right, one thing you'll notice though with this outline is that it begins to break at the verts of the, the mesh. And this is because uh, Cinti have opted for this polygon look. And it's a style choice really. But let's say you want it to be like a soft looking mesh. You can basically go to the meshes. Uh, let's see models and characters right and I'm going to duplicate their characters. Just control D or yeah. So that's now making a copy. Right. And then I'm going to go to the import settings and change the normals to uh, calculate area uh, angle weighted and I'm going to put this right up to the max and then apply and you'll see this mesh becomes kind of rounded and smooth okay so you can have the choice of maybe bring it to a set angle maybe like you don't want it to be so harsh you might want like 80 so if I apply that, you'll see that certain angles will remain flat. Okay, and this is where this is where these uh, verts split. That's what lets this faceted thing happen. So where there's a harsh change in the the angle, where it goes like from soft to hard, then there will be a split in the mesh. So just bear that in mind. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and bring this character one in. You can see how Cinti have set them up. They've put all the characters in one place and then you just hide what you don't want, right? So I'll just hide everything else. But I'll keep the gypsy, eh, the druid, rather. And there's also a lot of like weapons and stuff attached to it, so you might want to apply your new material to that. So I'm going to add the colour swap shader to her and all her bits. In fact, let me just select all of her. Uh, doesn't show everything so got that there's a lot of meshes in here. 
just going to add them to this as well. Um, open that up. Uh, anything else? There's an item there. I'm going to open all this up. Maybe there's a quick way to do it, but anyway. Um, Choose all the items and change it for this one. There's also this right shoulder here. Yeah, I think that's the most of, most of them. There's a few overlaps. Let's, let's take this sword and just hide that. And this back thing, I'll hide that as well. It's got a lot of swords and things attached. Let's uh, keep the book. I'll get rid of the dagger. Right, so she's got a couple of little vials there, and she's got this book. Can see, and these are just these are just attached to it looks like our hips and things. Okay, so now that the color swapper shader is on this one, just choose that, and I can make new changes to the textures. So instead of like this pink, I might want like this kind of yellow. Uh, whatever's changing to black, that's this one. I can make it red, so it's just kind of like this kind of fire type, right? Um, her skin tone could be a mix of a few things. So I've changed that to yellow skin. Okay, that's that one. Could just be that something's not quite reaching the range towards her skin. So one way to do it is to put the overall effect down and see her actual skin tone and then pick that color. Right, that's now what's going to change to blue. So you see her skin's gone blue there. So I can change the skin to anything there. Uh, let's do like a dark, dark brown. Let's change this yellow to a black tone as well. Let's see the overall effect, what's changing. And I want to change this cyan, so I'm going to pick this part here. The best way to do this is with the light off, and you don't get any like shadows and stuff. You get more, more or less a better color. And as I put this value back up, I can now change the value of this, but I have to increase the range. <coughs> So it might be the wrong tone. So if I make this deliberately like green, right? And then change the detected color manually until the bit I want turns green. So around about there, that's the actual true color of that part. All right, so that's one way to detect it. And then now I can change it to whatever I want. And we can get quite a unique looking character. Uh, change up this mucky yellow. So I'm going to put the overall effect back down to see the tr the original color. I'm going to pick this green, and now I can see that I can change this yellow to something different. Right. I've also got the option of the outline color. So I can make that black and increase the, the width. Um, you can see now the line is less broken. It only breaks where there's a hard angle. So there's a hard angle between these two faces. You can kind of see it there. And that's where this, this breaks. So it's not too bad if it breaks just in little places. If you don't want it to break so much, you can go back to the, the, the import of the mesh. 
So whereas with this models you can change the weight of it to like higher. And you've seen she changed a little bit there, but now the outline's not broken. But there is like the normals of the mesh are a little bit more bent. So I'm gonna put it back to 80 just to show you the difference. Watch what happens here. And you see the break happened there, and there's a little break here as well. So that's the only drawback to that. Now if we take it back to uh, what basically the angle they came in with was roughly five degrees where everything's flattened out again. You can see we've got that back, but we've got all these little breaks in the, the outline. And it's not too bad if you're zoomed out, but as you start to zoom in, you'll see these little kind of effective points. So let's go for 60 actually, a nice happy medium. And that way you keep some of the faceted areas looks like I'm going to increase the gonna increase the um, outline even more because for some reason 10 is still not enough. So I'm just going to increase that to... Oh, I see what's happened. Okay, it's multiplying by a very small amount. Let's just bring that back to 1. Probably too much now, yeah. But at least that gives us the range, right? So now, zero to one. That gives us just enough. In fact, you might want it more, so I'll give us to give us to three. All right. And you see where it's breaking there. So I'm going to return the mesh back to the full thing. Just choose the mesh. I'm going to put that back to 180, and you'll see it will fix a few of these broken parts. There we go. So now the, the outline's complete because it's not broken by the normals of the base mesh. Um, so if you want a unique look to your characters, you can duplicate the mesh, change the smoothing angle of the import, and let's move that up and then add the color swap shader to it. Uh, you can add also some outline width, the outline color. Right, if you want a nice uh, blue. Uh, there's also, I think I added Fresnel, but it's not showing up. Let me just, let me just enable that. I did add it somewhere. Okay, maybe not in this one. Okay, I'm gonna re-import the shader because I did do a few changes. So I'm gonna import custom package. And maybe this will break everything, but here we go. <coughs> okay, no, not too bad. So I added Fresnel to the shader which I've already added in a previous version. Just had to update materials. So yes, now there is the option of for nail color and amount. So we can make that white and the amount you want it to come through. And you can also, you know, change the scale of that. I think I'm going to boost that up as well. So the scale can go to 10. Right, so the scale can now go all the way to 10, but it's got a weird effect where it's adding too much color. Uh, let me just make sure it's reading it right. Got for now, multiplied by that, and that's the new color, blurp, multiplied by the emissive. I guess I'll just do like a clamp on these just to make sure they are not going too crazy. So if you're familiar with clamps, they just they keep things within a range. OK, 
here. It's not broken anything. And it's not entirely fixed everything, but that's okay. Now, I think because of these little defects here, I'm going to change the mesh back down a bit. So let's choose this. And I'm going to change it back to 80, just so that if it gets to a 90 degree angle, then it, it can cope. There we go, that's fixed, that bit. So I think 80 degrees is fine. The only drawback is, yeah, look, it's splitting the the outline a bit, but for the most part, we're seeing a good outline. Right, so that's the, the trade-off to that, if you want this soft look. But look how much different the characters are to the original. So you can get a pretty unique style. I'm going to add some animations from my low poly business people to this just to see how it looks in motion. And let's just change up some colors while it's animating. Looks like my width has returned back to clamp value. How did that happen? Uh, let's bring that back to was it three was the maximum. Three. Okay. And then change the outline to maybe black. Change the Fresnel to black as well. And there you have it. That's a pretty nice looking uh, finish look. We can also change like uh, the metalness here for the fifth color and overall emissive for a bit of an extra glow. Any soft fall off from that as well to mix the colors up and range and do the same for each color. Uh, and that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much everything. So thanks for watching this little demo. I hope you enjoy using this kind of method on existing low poly characters to make them more you know, rounded looking again. And I hope you understand why the outline breaks now, because uh, I was trying to add my color swap outline to these guys, but because they're all faceted, it breaks the normals and splits up the outline continue, continuousness. Continue, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. So thanks for watching. Bye.